The crowds outside the Roosevelt Hotel in Midtown Manhattan this week would have been familiar in any number of American cities. Struggling to contain a crisis of homelessness, dozens of people languishing on sidewalks, camping out on flattened cardboard boxes day and night. But for New York City, the scene made up of migrants waiting for beds in the city's overburdened shelter system was unusual, and it raised a difficult question. Will this become a new normal? New York has avoided the kinds of widespread encampments that are more common in cities on the West Coast, largely because of a unique legal agreement that requires the city to provide a bed for anyone who requests one. No other major city in America has a similar mandate, known as a right to shelter. But what happens when a city that is obligated to provide shelter for everyone runs out of shelter? This week, Mayor Eric Adams declared, in dire terms, that there was no more room left for migrants. His administration was coming up with a plan Mr. Adams said, so that we don't have what's in other municipalities where you have tent cities all over the city, evoking images of homeless camps in places like San Francisco and Seattle on the streets of New York. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Tent cities are on the rise around the country because of an extreme and growing lack of affordable housing, said Maria Foscarinis, founder of the National Homelessness Law Center, a nonprofit. The reason they are not as prevalent in New York is the city's legal right to shelter. That legal requirement should theoretically continue to keep New York's homeless people sheltered, and city officials say there are other sites available to use, including ones that require federal approval. But the city is now struggling under the weight of nearly 100,000 migrants who have arrived since last year. More than 56,000 migrants still remain in the New York City shelters, and the pace has not slowed. Last week alone, 2,300 new migrants arrived. New York City has opened 194 sites to house the newcomers in any usable facilities. It could find including hotel ballrooms, parking lots, former jails, and an airport warehouse. The city's homeless shelter population now exceeds 100,000 people, a record high. We are at the desperation stage, said Mark Levine, the Manhattan Borough president, who has joined other city officials in pleading for more federal help. We're going to have to make more and more difficult decisions on sitting facilities that at this point are all going to disrupt some aspect of life here. During a news conference on Wednesday, Deputy Mayor Ann Williams, Isom said the city has been a guardian of the right to shelter, but the system was buckling under pressure. In response to questions about potential sites for sheltering migrants, including Randall's Island and Central Park, she said all options were on the table. People on the one hand cannot accuse us of not having enough space, she said, and then on the other hand tell us, well, you can't go here and you can't go there. Some shelter sites have been delayed because of fierce opposition in neighborhoods where they would be located. The city's legal obligation stems from a class action lawsuit that was filed in the late 1970s, which argued that a right to shelter existed under the New York State Constitution. To settle the lawsuit, the city reached an agreement in 1981 to provide shelter for every homeless man who applies for it, which has since been expanded to women and families with children. The agreement also laid out the standards for care, including bed size and staff to resident ratios. Despite repeated challenges by mayoral administrations to weaken the mandate, it has endured for four decades because New Yorkers don't want to see mass homelessness, said Joshua Goldfein, a staff attorney at the Legal Aid Society which worked on the lawsuit that led to the 1981 agreement with the lawyer Robert Hayes, who founded the Coalition for the Homeless. They don't want to see people living in the streets with their children, he said. In West Coast cities that have struggled with homeless encampments, the shelter infrastructure is much more limited than in New York, according to Dennis Colhane, a professor of social policy at the University of Pennsylvania. In May, the Adams administration asked a New York court to relieve it from some obligations under the Right to Shelter Agreement. The court proceeding is still ongoing. The crisis of homelessness is felt in nearly every community across New York State, and it's getting worse. Just a year ago, state and local officials were bracing for an increase in homelessness as the COVID-19 eviction moratoriums and rental assistance programs ended. What they didn't anticipate were weekly busloads of migrants from the southern border, arrivals that continue on a regular basis today not just in Manhattan, but upstate as well, forcing officials to focus their attention on finding shelter and support for the newcomers. In some communities upstate, low-budget motels, having signed contracts to house migrants, have evicted their former extended stay guests, including families with children who have no place to go. It is a daunting challenge with a list of problems that demand attention. It's serious my paid
The root causes of homelessness have not shifted a great deal from the 1980s. Individuals who experience homelessness still tend to be affected by lack of affordable housing, poverty, low wages, addiction, mental health disabilities, and domestic abuse. This year also saw a historic rise in the homeless population in New York State due to the recent migrant influx, as mentioned above. The New York City Department of Homeless Services Census indicates that as of July 1, 2023, more than 81,000 persons are seeking shelter support from the city, compared with approximately 47,000 persons in the shelter system at this same time last year. In the downstate area, nearly one in three persons without stable housing are children. Competition for housing is more robust than ever. It is undeniable that a lack of affordable housing is causing and prolonging homelessness in communities across New York State. While this issue is a national cause for concern, a staggering 11 million American households pay over half of their income in rent. The affordable housing crisis is particularly severe throughout New York State, especially for families of color. This is attributable to the widening gap between housing costs and stagnant or falling incomes. In the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis, the affordability crisis become especially acute, causing affordability problems to become more severe throughout New York. In a 2018 study, the National Low-Income Housing Coalition found that New York lacks 624,688 rental housing units that were affordable for extremely low-income households, and that for every 100 households with extremely low incomes, there are only 32 affordable housing units. In 2023, we can see the real-time effects of the lack of affordable housing stock. The median timeline in New York City for shelter residents moving to permanent housing has doubled since 2020. It takes at least seven months on average for families to find affordable housing, and that is for the most fortunate among the housing lottery. The process of applying and qualifying for low-income housing is too cumbersome and bureaucratic for many applicants, and barriers to entry are too many, with too few staff members to assist the public. This confluence of factors is the perfect storm that keeps too many in the shelter system where they experience an unending cycle of housing instability. What's next? In order to address this crisis, in hopes of preventing catastrophe, NISBA's Task Force on Homelessness and the law has been charged to examine the causes and effects of the homelessness crisis, including, but not limited to the ways in which that crisis is affected by the criminal justice and healthcare systems, with focus on legal and policy considerations in New York State. By meeting that challenge, the task force will help bring clarity to a crisis that has taken far too long to resolve. Laura Brancato is a partner at Meltzer Leap A. Goldstein. I. Stone and chairs the Guardianship and Elder Law Litigation Practice Group. She devotes her practice to complex guardianship and elder law litigation, including Article 81 and 17 Guardianship Proceedings, Article 9 Proceedings under the Mental Hygiene Law, Power of Attorney Litigation, and Related Supreme Court Fiduciary Litigation. Brancato serves as co-chair of the Guardianship Committee of the Elder Law Section of NISBA and vice-chair of the Nassau County Bar Association Mental Health Committee.